past fatal heart impact, past painful scars. In fact, I blast tasteful bars and past I back up my actions. Back on mass, grab reactions, jack attack with every word and act with class as they hear me snap. I got nothing to lose, cause I fought and felt the bruise. Now I'm not the one confused, call the shots and they produce. I ain't lost, I'm finally loose. Pick a new so bird's juice. I need the views to boost me to a new abuse of being used. Everybody wants a peace now, y'all can rest in peace now. You're dead to me, so peace out. Remember you're discreet now. Get ready for the Alrighty, hello, hello everybody, this is Kiru Show here, and now, I was trying to post this what if last night, but, something went wrong with my recording. I noticed that there were glitches in the audio and it sounded pretty bad, so hopefully this time, I can solve that issue. Now. With that being said, let us begin. Whenever we last left off with this series, we had Izuku Midori and Bakugo Katsuki, who they were attacked in the forest. Now, Midori and Bakugo went to go investigate that flying briefcase that Sludgerland had. Them being able to find it in the forest, and Midoriya found a Giver unit suit. Now, Midoriya and Bako were then going to be attacked and killed by Zoonoids. And, Bako, he did try to face off against one in hand-to-hand -hand combat. However, he found that he's not strong enough. And he did break his arm. Midoriya sweeping in with a suit and taking out their zoonoids. As Midoriya then took Bakugo to the hospital, where they were able to use the convenient attack of the sludge villain as a cover for how Bakugo busted his arm. And Midoriya, he's still trying to understand what the hell happened. Now, with that being said, we do actually pick up with later that day. Bakugo is currently pacing back and forth in Midoriya's room, with his arm in a cast. As Midoriya, he is just sitting there on his bed, and he does hear what Bakugo is talking about. Okay, okay. Listen, Bakugo, that all sounds crazy, you know that, right? I, I know. But listen, they almost killed us out there. You saved my life. Hmm? I don't understand how I could have. That suit... It's just strange. Where did you put it? Huh? Y you took it off and hit it somewhere, right? Where is it? I, I don't know. I just kept saying things to try and get it off me and eventually just released. Hmm? It released? So it just lets you go and disappeared? Yeah. What? No, wait. I don't know what happened. Listen. I just... Came off of my body and vanished. Wait, it actually vanished? It didn't just like run away or fly away or something? <laughs> uh, I don't think that suit can fly. Hmm? What do you mean? Well, it just doesn't look physically capable of it. It doesn't have any like wings or anything like that. Yeah, but it could blast a can out of his chest. You killed those guys, dude. Hmm? Shh! Dude. Quiet down. If my mom thinks I'm a murderer, it's going to be a lot more complicated. Shit. Sorry. But it's just that, this being where a knock is heard on Midoriya's door. Midoriya turning his head as he does jump off of his bed. Walking over and answering it to Inko. Asking if he's okay. <laughs> yeah, mom, sorry. Well... It's just, <laughs> you know, me and uh, Bakugo were still kind of rattled from earlier today. Hmm? Oh, I understand. Sorry. But if you need to, I can make you something to get you, get you to relax. A cup of tea or anything like that? Something to drink? Uh, sure, Mom. Some tea and some honey would be fine. Now, Inko would go to walk off towards the kitchen. As Midoriya, he does turn back around to Bakugo, and Bakugo's sitting there at Midoriya's desk. 
as he's talking about everything that happened today. Those guys call themselves zoonoids, and he's not too sure what a zoonoid is. Hmm? A zoonoid? Yeah. I don't know. The way they were talking about it, they talked about the next stage in evolution. The guy was stronger than me, that's for sure. He was also able to outpower me. And I'm not too sure if that was possible. Hmm? Really? Well, yeah. I don't know. The way that guy was talking, he sounded like he could take on anyone. M maybe even All Might. Hmm? Wait. You think one of those guys play take on All Might? Well, uh, no, it's just... I'm just wondering. Hmm. I see. Well, let's hope we never find out, huh? <laughs> Uh, no. But Oya would walk over to his bed and sit back down. As he does, think about the suit with his hands up in the air. Before, he does go to plot backwards and, well, lay out. But Oya just thinking, Okay, today has already been weird. And then, some weird bioorganic suit attaches to his body. Okay, this couldn't get any weirder, could it? Now, Maroi is thinking, though. He wishes he had that suit still. He's curious about it. He wants to know what, this being where a flash of light does appear above Midoriya. And the suit does begin to manifest out of thin air through the ceiling. Midoriya actually going to look up at it surprised as he does jump up off of his bed. Now, the suit then would land there. As Midoriya, he ran over to his door and immediately locked it. As he does turn around, and you have Blocko who's just sitting there at the desk, and he does just look completely shocked. That's the suit. What? That's it? Yeah. Uh, how did you just do that? I, I didn't, I just thought about it. Hmm? What did you do? I, I just thought if I had the suit again. Hmm? That's not possible, is it? I don't know. This thing. It's insane. Where did it come from? That's a good question. Maybe it's... Well... I don't know. A prototype? A prototype. Really? Shit. That means people are going to be looking for this thing, right? Yeah. But if it's a government prototype, doesn't that mean we can get in trouble just for having it? Yeah. But, wait. If this is a prototype, then what about those guys after us? They were going to kill us. Hmm? Oh, crap. Do you, do you think they were agents? Well, they were wearing suits, right? Maybe they are. Or they're connected to something, I know that much, for sure. Hmm. Okay. Listen. This is all kind of crazy. Now. Midoya, he does walk up and over to the suit. As he does just think about it for one second. Looking over at it, this thing is pretty big. And it's about almost touching the ceiling with the very tip top right there. And Midoriya, he does go to grab the suit. Now, Midoriya, he, I'm just saying this right now, I don't know if this is physically possible for these suits, but for this what if, I'm saying that it is to make it more convenient. Midoriya, he pulls off the suit right where the bend in the elbow is. And he's very surprised, since that came off very, fairly easily. And Midoriya, he does look over it. Hmm. Wow. Midoriya says, feeling up this gauntlet. As he does actually bring his hand up and touch the blade. And he does just think, this thing's pretty... 
Well, sharp. Hmm. This thing's too big, though. What do I just think? I'm actually going to go and put it on. Now, what do I he's able to put on the gauntlet as he does so? He does feel it. This feels different somehow. Now, what do I he does just look at it? As he does go back to his thought about the blade being fairly large. As it does begin to shrink down and go further into the suit. And Midoya, he does just look at his surprise for one second. Now, Midoya, he does begin to actually think about it. For right now, the suit is something that he has no clue about. Now, after a few minutes of talking with Bakugo, Midoya, he does try to think about the suit disappearing once again. As it would vanish. Now. Boku would go to head home for the night. And Inko, she does come back with two cups of tea. As Boku is walking by, he does tell Inko that he's very sorry, but he has to go home right now. Hmm? But Boku, it's not even really that late. Uh, he, yeah, sorry, Miss Midoriya. Now, Boku would then head back to his apartment. As we do have Midoriya, who's currently in his room. And he is just still laying back on his bed. Ah, <sighs> okay. I need to learn more about what this thing is. And if possible, I need to try and turn it in. But wait, if I try to turn this thing in though, I could be killed. Those guys are pretty serious about keeping this thing a secret. Crap, am I stuck with it? Now, Inko would... Go to actually open Midoriya's door, fully opening it since it was partially left open by Bakugo. Enko asking Izuku, as he does go to jump up, if he would still like his cup of tea. Huh? Yeah, sure, Mom. Hmm. Her walking over and sitting it down on the desk, telling Midoriya that if he does want to speak about anything, then she's here to talk with him. He does know that, right? Hmm? Yeah. Sorry. I'm gonna be fine, but I just... Well, you know. Need a minute. I understand, Izuku. But... You do know that, right? Hmm? What? Know what? You can speak to me about anything. <sighs> I'm still your mother, after all. I worry about you. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Really, I'll be okay. Now, Inko would then go to leave. As you do have Midoriya, who does, walk over to his desk and sit down. As he does go to open up a journal and begin to take down notes as to the strange suit. Now, Midoriya doesn't really know what to call this thing. So, he just calls it a suit or a power suit for the moment. Now, with that being said, we do then actually have two weeks later. In this amount of time, Midoriya has been trying to learn more and more about the suit without leaving his apartment or taking it outside. Midoriya, he does still go to school and he does still try to keep up appearances. Until two weeks have passed since the Sledgeland attack. And Midori and Bakugo, whenever they do go to leave school today, there actually is a man in a black suit and tie who would stop Midoriya and ask him a question. Hmm? Excuse me, young man. Your name is Izuku Midoriya, correct? Uh, yes, sir. I'm sorry, who are you? Ah, that's on a need to know basis, young man. Now, please. The man going to reach into his jacket as Midoriya, he does freeze. The man pulling out a photo and asking if he's seen this briefcase. Midoriya looking at it. Hmm? Oh. Uh, that looks kind of similar to something I've seen before. Hmm? Where? Hmm? Uh, oh, sorry. No, I'm sorry. Listen, young man. 
This briefcase contains very, very sensitive material. And if it is not found, a lot of things can happen. Oh, well, me and my friend Baku were attacked two weeks ago. He was pretty hurt when we had to go to the hospital. This weird villain attacked us and he was carrying a case. It had the same symbol as that one. Hmm? Really? Yeah. We try to fight it, but I'm kind of quirkless. Hmm? Oh, I see. That's quite rare. Hmm? Uh, well, yeah. I couldn't really do much. But the number one hero showed up and he blasted the villain away. Your case got, I don't know, blown away as well. I didn't see where it went, but I think it went towards the shopping center? Hmm? Really now? Is that all you know? Uh, yes sir. I wish I could help more, really. Hmm? Alright, thank you for your cooperation. Now, you do have Baka who would come walking out as well. And the man would ask him the same question. Now, Midoriya, he prepared for this scenario, telling Bakugo earlier, or the two weeks ago back, that night, about what would happen if anyone came looking for them. And they stuck to that story. Bakugo basically saying the same thing, talking about how the briefcase got flung towards the mall, or towards the downtown area, which the man, he would just look back at Midoriya and know that his story does fit. As the guy does go to leave. Now, Midori and Baku would head back to the apartment. And whenever they do actually walk into Midori's room and close the door, they do begin talking. Baku, he's saying that they're really, they really did a good job with that. I know, but listen, they know we know about the case now. They might have targets on us. Hell, they might have bugged this place. Hmm? Listen, slow your roll, Midoriya. Those guys don't know we have the case, or have this thing. Y yeah, I know, but still. It's just so... strange. Yeah, but our story lines up. Hmm? Yeah, I, I get that, but still. This suit... It's dangerous. Yeah, and so are the guys after it. Listen, if we need to, we could try to, well, take the guy down again. Hmm? But that would be killing. I don't know. Those guys, they turned into bubbles in some strange liquid. Are you sure they're really even human? What? I mean... They look like monsters. They act like they're not even people. They were going to murder us, dude. I, I mean, maybe, I don't know. Listen, that's pretty complicated. I don't really even know what to say to that. Hmm. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. I'm just still freaking out. Yeah, so am I. Ah, uh, now. Midoriya, he would manifest a suit. And Baku would watch Midoriya as he does put on a gauntlet and actually go to put on the helmet. Baku asking Midoriya if he's all good. Huh? Yeah, I'm fine. But it's just, I'm trying to learn more about this thing. Study it. And maybe I can find out if it originated from some company. Or, well, at least get some clues to who may have built it. Hmm? Why do you want to figure that out? <sighs> because think about it. These suits, they're being made somewhere, right? They have to have been. This thing is just so sketchy, don't you think? Yeah, you're right about that. Now, Baku would ask Midoriya if he can completely suit up. And Midoriya, he would do that. 
as he does begin to start thinking about it. As he does go to put on the belt. Talking about how he doesn't really know what this does. Now, but the way he does bring his hand up. And he does press the button on the belt. As he begins to levitate off of the ground. Now, Midoriya, he's completely shocked by this. As he does press the button again and go to fall down and make somewhat of a loud thud. Now, the moment that that does happen, Inko, she was concerned. As Midoriya, he immediately began to try and tear the suit off of his body, demanding that it release him, release him, let him go, let him go, get away, get away. The suit doing so and disappearing as Midoriya, he's trying to think. Walko actually going to stand up and quickly, with his good hand, push Midoriya down onto the ground. Midoriya falling over and going to catch himself. As Walko, he quickly does go to sit back down and Inko, she does walk into the room. Midoriya, him, bring his leg down as he does go to turn and go to say something. Before he can, Inko does ask what's going on. Uh, hey, Mom. Oh, Miss Midoriya. Um, sorry, he just slipped. Huh? What's going on? I'm helping him get into some better shape. I was trying to tell him what to do, but, well, you know. These floors are, floors are kind of slippery. Hmm. Okay, um, are you alright, Izuku? Yeah, I'll be fine. It's just, um, I hurt my chin is all. Oh, do you want an ice pack? Maybe later, Mom. I'll, I'll get one myself, don't worry. I'm okay, really. Mm, okay. Enko going to leave. As Midoriya, he does quickly spin over and sit down on the ground, telling Balko that that was a really good save. <laughs> Ah, uh, damn. That was close. Y yeah, it was. The suit can hover. Hmm? Hover? I don't think that that was possible. I need to write that down. Now, Walko does go to stand up. And tell Midori that that's really good for him. For right now, he's going to go and at least try to train himself. Hmm? Train? Yeah, I still have to go to UA, you know? Uh, Alright, I get it. Now, Baku would go to head out. As Midori himself, he does want to learn more about the suit. And he does have a, an idea that he can do. However, he's going to have to wait till later tonight to execute it. Now, with that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed, and have an amazing night. I'll catch you guys in the next part. And I pray that this recording did not get corrupted or get messed up.